Bullswire proposed an absurd trade between the New York Knicks and the Chicago Bulls, and I'm here with Rico from Bulls Digest to break it down. So what's up, guys? Welcome to Knicks Digest and Bulls Digest. We're doing a crossover. I'm here with my guy, Rico. If you guys don't know, I sometimes do a little bit of work on Bulls Digest also, and we're here to talk about a crazy trade. So honestly, Rico, I was thinking about it. Let's just jump right in and talk about the proposed trade from Bullswire, which is Julius Randle and Boyan Bogdanovich, along with a future first-round pick for Zach Levine. Now, I think any Knicks fan is going to know my opinion since I love Julius Randle. I always voice it on this channel. So I'm going to throw it to you. What do you think on this idea? Well, you know, we talked a little bit off camera and I've wanted Julius Randle and you're like, there's no way we're getting Julius Randle and I totally get it. Um, but you know, I get this in the sense that both players are kind of on the same track because both players have been injured and I think both teams actually played well without them. All right. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why the GMs might explore this deal. Also, too, the contract situation matches up as well. So I think that that's you know, two things that actually maybe the GM might be thinking about here and why that deal might work. Now, as a Chicago Bulls fan, I absolutely would love it. We're getting a two-time All-Star. We're getting a Most Improved Player of the Year award winner in Julius Randle. We certainly need somebody to beat somebody up inside. We've wanted that with the Chicago Bulls. And look, I, I have to say I would be super excited with the fact of having Julius Randle possibly paired with maybe one of these young centers coming out. I've grown on Zach Eady a lot. I know there's a lot of other bigs out there that we could possibly get our hands on, but uh, I love really increasing that interior and getting a bit more feistier inside in the Eastern Conference, certainly. Okay, so I hate this deal. Yep. I think that Julius Randle is a better player than Zach Levine. Of course. I don't understand why we're adding the first round pick. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this. Yeah. I understand because you are right. The Knicks have played well without Julius Randle and the ball movement's been better. And part of the reason is because Randle's an isolation scorer. That typically happens when an isolation scorer is out, especially when he's not the best player on the team, which Randle isn't, which does add something to this. But y'all would have to throw first round picks at us for this to happen. 100%, 100%, because I've actually seen some reports that the Knicks would be interested in making deals only if it's going to net some first round picks. And I totally understand that, especially with Tibbs and this whole situation. I think he wants to keep it a little bit younger as this championship window opens up. So I think that that makes a whole bunch of sense. And I, I totally agree with you in the sense that Here's one thing I'll throw out there as a caveat, and I'm not even a Knicks fan, but I've had Tom Thibodeau as my coach. I love him, but I think he's going to probably lose even more hair because he doesn't have hair as it is trying to coach Zach Levine up on the defensive end. So that's why this deal would be a bit of a head scratcher. I think Chicago Bulls fans would absolutely love it because Julius Randle has shown that he can play uh, outside of another ball dominant player, which that might be Kobe White this year. All right. And so that might give us an excuse also to say all right we're going to move on from DeRozan we're going to give you the keys now to operate here with Kobe White from a, from a perspective from someone who moonlights at Bulls Digest I will say the fit of Julius Randle on that team is essentially impeccable you get an all NBA forward who just works the inside game I would really love seeing Randall join a team with DeMar DeRozan and Lonzo Ball if Julius Randall was not on my favorite basketball team in the New York Knicks. That is where I have a problem with it. And again, as I mentioned to you, because we have talked about Randall and Levine and a bunch <laughs> of stuff off camera with it. Indeed. I like, I like Julius more than most Knicks fans do. Yeah. I really love him. I think he's an awesome fit for this team. I think the Knicks are better with him. I think they would have walked through the Indiana Pacers, which is we're kind of filming this in the middle of that series. I think they would have walked through the Pacers with Randall. I think not having him has caused his playoffs to be a lot more difficult. And I think with a fully healthy team, the Knicks could have really given the Celtics a run for their money. Do I think they would have won the series? Probably not. But it would have been close. The Knicks would have proven they're very close to being a finals contender. Now... Here's where something interesting comes in, because I think we're both in agreement that trade is lopsided. But say you were to do something 
Let's go with a three deep trade, because you're right. Tibbs would lose the rest of his hair if Zach Levine was on his team. But let's say some three team trade were to happen that sent Julius Randle to the Chicago Bulls. We're going to speculate. We're going to have some fun with this. And let's just say Zach Levine goes to a third team. Like, I pitched the Pistons on Bulls Digest because they desperately need a perimeter scorer who can create for himself, take some pressure off Kate Cunningham. Let's say the Bulls were to give the Knicks some draft capital and maybe the Pistons also in exchange for helping the deal work to the Knicks. Then there becomes something interesting where the Knicks can try to work something into that where they could maybe get a star they believe would fit better than Julius Randle. From your perspective, as a Chicago Bulls fan, you guys are sort of kind of middling out right now. And when you look at that, you can land Julius Randle, who's going to be age 30 next season. Do you think that would give an incentive to maybe continuing to move picks and do what the Chicago Bulls owners want to do, which is never rebuild and maybe kind of retool the roster, add in Julius Randle, use the fact that DeRozan is still an all-star level player and a very good isolation score with an emerging Kobe White, with a finally returning Lonzo Ball. Would you want to see the Bulls just try to make something happen if they were able to get Randall and maybe try to compete for the future? Uh, well, I mean, that's going to be a tough situation, right? Because we already have a center that we both agree on that at this point in time is, is a backup center, right? And we're hoping yeah. that we can at least increase his value and, and get him out of there towards the trade deadline. I think that that would be a great situation for us with Vooch, all right? Um, it, it is a bit of a run it back type of feel if you bring Julius Randle in. I think one of the key things that our listeners should really pay attention to is that we said that there is a contract match just about when you make this deal. All right. So that's essentially we're not getting out of any kind of wiggle room for like cap space and all that stuff like that. So that's just to put that out there. All right. But we are getting a player that is going to give us a lot of interior uh, guts. I mean, he's definitely going to be a factor in the Eastern Conference. And I think both you and I can agree that if you have bigs in the Eastern Conference, that's a premium. And that might be possibly the golden uh, road to the NBA Finals for you getting out of the East. I mean, look how good the Cavs were when they had Evan Mobley and Jared Allen clicking, all right? And I've said this several times that I feel like the East can be had, all right? I felt like the Bucks could never get it together, and I felt like the Celtics were always an injury away, which is why I think that even if you guys were to get out of this series, the Celtics can still be had, all right? Because, you know, quite honestly, uh, with KP, Kristoff, he's always been injured. So we would be in a bit of a running back situation. I mean, it, and it sucks because Randall is 30. Um, I hate to say that. Like, this would be a deal I think a lot of us would salivate on if he were 27 at this point in time, right? But the fact that he's 30, he's gone through some injuries, like, that scares me. I think he's going to definitely be a terror for, but. If he digresses and we basically are locked into the same type of money we have with Levine, um, that that's going to be a huge problem for us, man. Especially if we've you know sold off a lot of our draft capital and we don't have anything for the next five, six, seven years from now. I think Bulls fans right now can see that we are a uh, we're a reactive team. All right, we're reacting to a lot of situations and we have zero control over our players at this point because we have them locked into such terrible contracts. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of research on the Bulls when I started doing some Bulls Digest work. I basically, you just said everything that I would personally agree with. And for my Knicks Digest, guys, for the people seeing this on Knicks, I do want to touch on the Knicks real quick and just ask, from an outsider perspective, for, for the Knicks who, they have eight available first-round picks to be traded this summer, they have tradable contracts in Boyan Bogdanovich, who would be essential to making a deal for a $40 million player like Zach Levine. The Knicks also have Mitchell Robinson at $16 million. So they end if they wanted to move Julius and maybe adjust and take a different star, they also have that contract. So they have some stuff they could do. As someone who's an outsider, someone who isn't a Knicks fan, where would you personally say the Knicks were at? And again, from an outsider's perspective, is there anything you would like to see the New York Knicks do that could maybe make them a better team in your mind? 
Well, first and foremost, I think the Knicks are in a great situation, having been familiar with Tom Thibodeau. All right. His coaching style absolutely wins games. All right. He won them in Chicago. He won them in Minnesota. And he's going to win here with the Knicks. The issue now is, can he keep guys fresh enough? And that's what's really scary for me. Uh, You're starting to see a lot of the things that happen to us as a franchise, man. We would get deep. And then guys would start to fall off. And so I think what Tibbs and maybe that front office is thinking is perhaps we have got to get some fresh players in here that we can go to, uh, you know, to give these guys some minutes. Right. So I think that that's the first thing. And I think that Tibbs, to me now, he's in probably, I think, one of the best situations he's been in offensively. I think since he left the Boston Celtics as an assistant coach, I think that this team is one of the better scoring teams that he has had. And, you know, I I think that our team is up there with the MVP, Derrick Rose. We were right there. But this team, it can score the ball. All right. It, It can. All right. With the three Villanova guys, they can. So I just think that at this point, man, the one thing that I would say for them is they're going to have to find a replacement, I think, for Mitchell. That's one thing. I think they're going to have to get another big that's going to be able to fulfill this void and take away the Miles Turners, the Kristaps, the Giannis. You need to get a guy like that for sure. And I think they need to get another person a lot like Deuce McBride. Remember Quentin Grimes? I loved him when he was on the roster, and I think he was really starting to get up there. I watched a lot of his games out of Houston. I think he could have been a terrific two-way player. I think you need to get you another two-way player. I think he got his Luol Deng with like an OG and Nobly kind of player. I think he needs to probably get a little bit more help there. Uh, maybe that comes off the bench for when Jalen Brunson has to take those much needed breaks during games. I love the I love the takes. That was clearly from an educated basketball fan, as I did say, you're an outsider from the perspective of the Knicks fans. Um, but really, guys. If you want to hear more of Rico's takes, which you guys just should, make sure to check out Bulls Digest. I don't care if you're a Knicks fan. Just do it anyway. It's fun. And you get to learn more about other teams. Rico's a diehard fan. He's also a very smart fan, I might add. I watch his Bulls Digest videos all the time. It helps with me when I moonlight there. So (laughs) that's definitely very helpful. But, guys, make sure to tune in to more videos like this. We're going to keep going on some other videos in the future. We're definitely going to drop some just simply on Bulls Digest about their offseason. You won't want to miss any of the con- any of the content. So subscribe to Knicks Digest. Subscribe to Bulls Digest. We'll catch you on the next one. Later, guys. Peace. Peace, peace. Go Bulls. <laughs>